So, so welcome. I am Jamie Cope with the WVU Industrial Extension. Good to see everybody with us today. I hope Bill Woodrum brought enough for everybody to eat. Um, so uh, I'd like to get started just uh, real quickly. Uh, we've got a, a, a good panel here with us today. We're gonna give each of them a chance to talk about who they are, what they do, and then we're just gonna jump right into some questions. And the goal is to make this as interactive as possible. So uh, once those questions start, start being fired, we can uh, love to hear from the, 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 the folks that are in attendance. Plus, uh, you can always put stuff in the chat as well. So feel free to use the chat liberally, and then we'll open it up and uh, even open up microphones and stuff like that if you want to talk. So um, I'd like to, to, to start. We'll let uh, David Living from HADCO talk a little bit about who he is and what he does. So take it away, Dave. All right, let me get my uh, screen going here. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, yeah, Dave Living here with the Huntington Area Development Council. We, we're a uh, local economic development group based in Huntington. Uh, we also manage the affairs of the Wayne County Economic Development Authority. So we serve two counties as a local economic development group. Uh, and uh, uh, we are a... Actually, we are an accredited economic development organization, uh, the only one in West Virginia, and we're accredited by the International Economic Development Council, or all of us in the business call IEDC. So basically what we do is we're in the business of attracting new uh, investment to our region and our two counties, and uh, we also spend a lot of time on working with our existing employers to help them expand and grow uh, their, their business here. Um, our, we've been around since the 90s, uh, probably about 1992, 1993 is when HADCO was formed. And we've had a lot of uh, uh, experience in standing up uh, uh, buildings, uh, shell buildings that we work to populate with businesses uh, that create jobs and, and invest here. This is a photo here of Harbor Steel that's down in Pritchard, West Virginia. Um, and uh, they're one of our tenants. They've been leasing from us for about 15 years. And they're a metal service center that uh, employ quite a few people there in the Pritchard area. Uh, some other examples there, so Jeffy, that they're also down in Pritchard. They're a growing automotive supplier. Uh, and then of course, uh, the call center here is InfoCision uh, in the Huntington area, uh, a call center that does uh, customer service work. We do over probably 100 uh, business visits a year with our existing companies. So we stay in touch with them, try to understand issues that they're facing and try to help them solve problems and make connections with them. Uh, actually, we're having a, uh, uh, a, an employer expo today with our partners at Advantage Valley uh, with uh, uh, focusing on the healthcare sector. So Mountain Health Network, uh, is, is involved in that, CAMC is involved in that. And it's uh, a whole thing about connecting our smaller businesses with our larger employers that need to purchase goods and, and services. Uh, at, at mentioning Advantage Valley, that's the uh, corridor on Long I-64 between Charleston and Huntington. What's, a, what's really great about uh, being a partner of Advantage Valley is we have a lot to sell regionally. So we try to focus our uh, sales casting a wide net, selling the entire region, and then letting our real estate close deals on the, on the back end once we get them into our, into our catchment area. Uh, and then of course, we all are probably familiar with just our connectivity in the Huntington area. Uh, Advantage Valley is served by two commercial airports. And then of course, we have the interstate system, 64 corridor, the 77 and 79 coming into Charleston. Uh, Little alone fact, we have two class one railroads that serve the Huntington area, Norfolk Southern and uh, uh, CSX. And of course, Norfolk Southern has an intermodal facility in, in Columbus that serves our, serves our area. And then of course, the Ohio River, the great Ohio River that uh, I always refer to it as the great cultural divide, jokingly. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the Ohio River at one time was uh, the largest uh, inland port in the, in the country was the Huntington District. And I think right now we're, out, we're number two due to the decline in a lot of coal business. 
And then of course we partner with our folks at the West Virginia Development Office and Morgan, who's on the call uh, to uh, connect uh, our businesses with all the uh, state incentive programs, including training grants, loans, um, credits that are available uh, as well, uh, and that sort of thing. And then uh, this is just an example of a company that had co-recruited into the Huntington area. We sold them their property uh, that they uh, uh, purchased up in uh, Lesage. Actually, it's in Green Bottom. And uh, we work with them to uh, uh, provide some local incentives in addition to some of the other. We gave them some reduced rate on their, their land sale to get them here. And today they employ over 800 people in Cabell County, one of the larger employers in the, in the county. And that's about it. That's just a little bit about HADCO and uh, Wayne County Economic Development Authority and the things that we do. Great. Thanks, Dave. That was awesome. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Um, we, uh, we did something a little, little different from the last round of these roundtables we did, and we've, we've included uh, the agriculture business development folks. I'm excited to have them on board with us. This is, uh, you know, uh, oftentimes whenever we talk manufacturing, I think those guys are overlooked. So glad to have Lacey with us today. So Lacey, you want to go ahead and do the next round and talk about who you are and what you guys do? Absolutely. Let me pull my slides up here. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah. All right. So hi, everyone. A few familiar faces. So good to see those of you that I've met before. My name is Lacey Davidson Ferguson. I work with the um, Business Development Division within the state West Virginia Department of Agriculture. Um, I am what is known within our division. I can't forward my slides. Here we go. As a regional planning coordinator, so I pulled the map up here. You can see I cover the territory um, that includes the Advantage Valley in the green. And I have a few um, other colleagues within our division that cover other areas of the state. Um, if you know folks that are in the dark blue area that don't have any counties identified, we kind of tag team those until we find folks to um, represent those counties specifically. But what we do as planning coordinators are uh, to be local liaisons or resource uh, facilitators for folks that are looking to expand or grow their agriculture-based business. Um, this could be things like navigating the regulatory issues that they might face. It might be um, looking for funding for a particular part of their enterprise. Um, it could be um, working through labeling or um, infrastructure development. So there are a lot of different um, kind of hats that we wear within this in this role. So that's the um, planning coordinator division. Just while I have you, I'll, I'll talk very briefly about a couple other programs within our division. One is our West Virginia Grown. It's a marketing program that we facilitate. Um, the logo is in the bottom left of the screen. And uh, this is a free program folks can enroll in just to help um, market their particular brand or business as it relates to agriculture. And then the other um, well-known program within our division is our Veterans and Heroes to Agriculture. So uh, Dane Geyser is our point of contact there, and he holds, hosts a lot of different workshops, um, training seminars, um, sponsorships, uh, scholarship opportunities for anyone um, or family members of veterans and heroes in the agriculture sector. So that is my spiel. Thanks, Jamie. Great, thank you, Lacey. And uh, you reminded me of a few things. We are recording, so uh, we'll be sending this recording out and I'll be sure and put uh, the contact information for all the folks here in the, the, the panel so that you can reach out to them if you wanna get uh, in touch with them after the, the panel. So I'll send that out with, uh, with a recording later. But thank you, Lacey, great stuff, great stuff. So Morgan, why don't you tell us a little bit about what the development office does? Sure. Thank, Jamie, thank you for having me on. Hi, everyone. I'm Morgan Tenney with the West Virginia Development Office. Several people on this call I've met with and glad to have you guys here with us today. Um, so the Development Office actually has quite a few uh, different 
agencies and departments within them. Um, not everyone's familiar with all of them, so I just wanted to explain that breakout. Um, I am part of the Business Industrial Development Division of the Development Office. Uh, we refer to that as BID. Uh, we really kind of have three entities within the BID team. Uh, we have Retention and Expansion, which is the group I'm part of, uh, that works specifically with existing companies here in West Virginia. Uh, we also have an attraction team that is actively trying to recruit new companies and investment into West Virginia. And then we also have a research and training team as part of that. Um, in addition to our BID team, we also have an international team that is doing a similar work, trying to attract uh, new companies from uh, di different countries. But we also have an export team that helps existing West Virginia companies get their product or service abroad. Um, so really today I'm going to focus a lot about the BID and the international side of things. However, we do have a few other divisions within the development office. We have the West Virginia CAD, that's Community and Advancement Development. Uh, they primarily handle most of the grants for the state um, and focus a lot about uh, infrastructure and sustainability, and you see some of the other things there as well. We also have the SBDC. We love acronyms in the state, so I hope you guys are keeping up with that. Uh, but SBDC is the Small Business Development Center, and we have small business coaches all around the state that can help small businesses uh, start with an idea or just help with any small business needs, and we'll talk about that a little bit today as well. We also house the Office of Energy and the West Virginia Broadband Enhancement Council in the Development Office. Um, and those folks are really working on a variety of things, including different en energy grants for companies and trying to do some grant writing for um, broadband, as we all know on this call is imperative to economic development here in West Virginia. Um, so just to narrow that down a little bit, I did mention I'm on the retention and expansion team. The retention team is divided geographically, just like Lacey's team is. So you can see here those highlighted, com uh, highlighted counties are the counties that I meet companies in. So I have Pleasance County down into Wayne, and I know I've seen a few um, Jackson and Wood County companies on the call today as well. So thank you all for being with us. Um, really, that that is it, and I'm excited to be with you guys. Um, I will summarize this by saying I am like a concierge to the state. If a company has an issue, I am here to help them fix it, whether it's a workforce, finance, export research issue. I've been called about stop signs and groundhogs. You never know what you're going to get an, an issue on. So I am here to make sure that West Virginia companies stay here and grow here, and I'm here to help however I can. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you, Morgan. And uh, yeah, and, and, and thank you, Morgan and Lacey, for not having regions that line up perfectly. So some of you guys are going to get to do double duty to cover a couple of different of these uh, roundtables, but uh, glad to have you all here with us. Uh, the, the last panelist I'd like to, to talk about or talk with is David Carrick with the WVU Industrial Extension. So David, why don't you take it away? All right. Uh, can you, are my slides up, Jamie? Okay. So good morning, everybody, and you know, thank you all for being here, Lacey, Morgan, Dave, Sat or Dave Living. Um, it's great to have you all here with us, and I, I think it really speaks to how well we all work together to try to support the state. So it's always always good to see all of you this morning. Um, I am the associate director for the Industrial Extension. We are based in the Benjamin Statler College of Engineering and Mineral Resources at West Virginia University, and we're also the state's only affiliate to the NIST Manufacturing Extension Partnership, which is a nationwide program. Um, that program has centers similar to ours in all 50 states and Puerto Rico. Um, the main goal of that program and the Industrial Extension is to support manufacturing in the state. Um, you know, looking at how the program was developed back in the 80s during the Reagan administration, there was a need to support small, medium-sized manufacturers. Uh, my, my standard spiel always says, you know, when you look at Boeing, John Deere, Ford, those large companies, they can throw a team at a problem. They can bring in top dollar national global consultants. But when you look at the footprint in West Virginia for manufacturing, there's a lot of small and super small manufacturers who may not even know what they need or know what they need and aren't sure how to get there. And that's where we come in to help. Um, I want to brag a little bit because I'm really proud of the work that we do. Um, 
looking at some metrics from fiscal year 2019, we're getting a 2020 updated right now. This is just some of the impact we've had in our national network across the uh, state. So a lot of increased sales, jobs created, retained, a lot of investment, a lot of cost reduction. Those are all the things that we try to help with. Um, the way we do that is through the um, solution services we offer. A lot of our work is in occupational health and safety, doing things like mock OSHA assessments, um, developing quality systems, or I'm sorry, safety, <laughs> safety programs. And some of our center or some of our clients, we actually serve as their safety person. We come in on a monthly basis, uh, conduct assessments for them, conduct training. And when they have a question or a need, we're the first person they call. Um, quality management systems, we do a lot of work with ISO 9001. We're getting into some other areas like HACCP, um, 14001, which is the environmental standard. Again, all those things that uh, can make a business look more attractive to a new customer base or retain an existing customer base. Um, operational improvement, all of the continuous improvement and the lean buzzword things you probably heard ad nauseum over the years, um, doing trainings for things like um, 5S workplace organization, creating job instructions, process mapping to understand how your uh, operation works so you can identify where you want to improve and grow, value stream mapping to understand where the value and non-value added tasks are, and some other just kind of off the cuff things that we've learned through our travels and to help you um, become stronger as an operation. Workforce and leadership, we do a lot of training. Almost everything we do has a training component to it because our philosophy is that if we don't teach you how you're doing it or what you're doing, then it's just something else you have to do. So we wanna make sure you understand what's going on. Um, so some of those things I've talked about so far with health and safety, quality management, operational improvement, training opportunities and all those. And we've worked really closely with Morgan and her office to help the governor's guaranteed workforce grant. Uh, Dave Living from HACA, who is also on, on our board of advisors, has been a huge instrumental part of this, connecting us with some companies and some of these opportunities. It's, it's been a really good uh, relationship throughout the years. Um, from the leadership side of things, we do everything from one day uh, introductory classes for people who used to work on the shop floor that are now in charge of their friends and people they used to work with to help give them those basics. Um, and you think about what we see every day, you know how to use a machine, you know how to do a job really well, but when you're put in charge of people, unfortunately, we're not machines. We have good days, bad days, and sometimes that can change on the whim. Unless you're Jamie Cope, that guy's always happy and it scares me a little bit. Um, and when he has a bad day, I think we're all going to have a bad day. <laughs> um, you know, when we talk about leadership, and that's one of the things that we see a lot of here is that you know, all of this stuff starts with good leadership. So we want to help develop those leaders young, you know, as they come up from the plant floor into the ranks of, even if it's just a team lead, a supervisor, we work to give them the skills they need to go on to be successful. And you know, lastly, innovation and growth. Um, there is an ecosystem here at West Virginia University that uh, does a lot of this. Bill Woodrum, who's on the call, thank you for being here with us, Bill. He's leading an initiative in the state that we were on a call about last week that was really exciting. Um, we apply a lot of those things to our clients to help them understand, you know, what are your strengths and opportunities? How can we help your company grow and have a stronger footprint in what you're doing based on what you're already good at? So just a kind of a quick water hose of all the, the different things we offer. Um, if you have questions, obviously ask them on the, in this forum. I've included Stacy Miller, our center director's contact information here because it's easier for her to work than me. Um, our website, we have a LinkedIn group where we can connect with you. Basically, any way we can connect with you to help, let us know. Like Morgan, we're here to help you guys, and we want to do what we can to support the state's manufacturing community. So uh, with that, I will stop blabbering and hand it back up to Jamie. Great. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. So, uh, so now uh, we're, we're, we're going to say we're really hoping that this is the last one that we have to do virtually. We're hoping that the next round of these will all get to be in person and, and uh, interact a little bit more naturally. but. But uh, would love for this to be as interactive as we can get it moving forward. I've got a, a few topics here. That people were encouraged to uh, submit topics that they would like to discuss. So I've got some here. We'll throw that out to the panel first. But if there's anybody that would like to chime in, I see a lot of our manufacturers are here with us. Um, would love to, to hear from you as well. Um, and... Uh, I saw, saw James Shaw had his camera on earlier. I've, I've, this guy's been on all of our webinars and I never knew what he looked like. And now he's got his camera off, but that's all right. I was like, wow, cool. I get to see something. There he is. Hey, James. So, uh, so yeah, what we'll do now is one of the topics that was on everybody's mind and is always on everybody's mind, I'd like to hear some, some feedback from our panelists first, uh, is on workforce. And there's the, the, the things that were fired off, like 
lack of candidates, uh, recruitment retention, keeping good employees, um, labor shortages. So um, Morgan, Dave, Dave, Lacey, any of you want to maybe chime in on how your organization helps with those kinds of issues or, or what you've seen in the, the workforce? Sure, hard question to start out with, Jamie. Um, and I'll, I'll begin by saying if anyone knows a CDL driver, they can definitely get a job and some very good money right now. Um, you know, I think that we're all feeling the effects of the pandemic and, and having the issue of that labor shortage, but there are some things at the state that we're trying to do to help. So within the Department of Commerce is Workforce West Virginia, which is um, our agency that helps people file unemployment claims, but they also try to connect employers with jobs. They have some different uh, job training monies as well if you hire someone through their system. So I always try to mention that whenever I'm in uh, meetings with companies. Um, another thing that's going on is we're working with uh, the platform called Job Case. It's similar to like an Indeed or Monster. So you all should definitely look that up. We are the only state in the country that actually has a contract with Job Case to specifically put West Virginia employment opportunities on that site. You can actually narrow it down by city too. So like major city areas, um, but really anyone can post. We've also done a couple of very specific job fairs with job case where they um, blast it out to everyone on the platform and then ask them to join. Um, and, and surprisingly, you know, we have a lot of companies that are expanding right now. So that's a way that we've tried to help those companies that are expanding find folks. Um, two more things I'll point out really quick. We do have some workforce training dollars that can help. Um, so if you have any trainings that you're doing, you're hiring and you're training folks, whether maybe WVMEP is helping you in a way, we can help reimburse. And Dave Carrick mentioned that program. And then lastly, um, De Department of Labor apprenticeships are also another way that we're trying to help employers keep retain and train employees. Um, and we have people within our office that can actually help you set that up or talk about it if you don't know what that looks like. Um, Jamie, I'll stop talking, that was enough. But if you have questions about any of the things I just said, let me know. <laughs> okay, that's good. I can uh, chime in, Jamie, if you don't mind. Sure, um, please. One of the things that we try to do in, in the work that HADCO does in uh, Cavill and Wayne is, is uh, we can help uh, any of the employers that are on the call today uh, with just recruiting and letting people know that you may have positions that need filled. So we keep a uh, pretty robust uh, Facebook page. We, we, we have a presence on LinkedIn and also on Twitter and other platforms. But uh, we just did this with Sajefi. Sajefi was uh, hiring and they're in a, a hiring mode. After the pandemic, uh, they, they had a little bit of a slowdown and they had to ramp back up again. Their business was really strong, but you know they really needed people to come back to work. And so we were able to post those job uh, postings on our, on our uh, social media platforms just to kind of help. So that we don't charge anything for that. It's a free service. The other thing that we're doing is we keep uh, in regular contact with our uh, uh, career and technical schools, our high schools, and uh, also our uh, community and technical colleges. We have superintendents from Wayne County and the superintendent from uh, Cabell County that, that are on our board. And um, so we're in touch with them. And, and uh, that's, another, that's another source uh, to kind of get folks coming out of the pipeline that's already in training. Uh, to make them aware of job availability as well. So don't hesitate to call on us or your local, your local economic development group, whoever that may be, uh, and ask for their help in getting the word out. Cool. And uh, obviously Lacey and David Carrick can, can chime in if they want, but I would love to hear from some manufacturers if you guys have some, some workforce issues that you're dealing with or uh, Anything that uh, that you found that works, I guess, a place if, if, if you got a secret that you want to share on uh, how to find these folks, just uh, let me know. We can unmute. Sabrina had a question in the chat. We've had a recent false unemployment claim. Is there anything you suggest when this happens? Absolutely. 
Um, Workforce West Virginia can help with that. Sabrina, if you have tried reaching out to them and maybe you're getting an automated response or, or haven't gotten a response in the last couple of days, feel free to share that with me and I'll take care of it on our end. Workforce West Virginia has been completely, I mean, I hate to say bogged down, but the last year has been incredible for them. Sure. Um, so if you want to send that to me directly, I'd be happy to help you with that. But Workforce West Virginia should be able to help you um, with that claim. Sure. And uh, Jamie, one of the other, oh, oh. Go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, one of the other things that uh, was under workforce was was um, how to qualify candidates. And I know, Dave, we worked on a, a project not long ago. If you wanted to talk about that, um, that'd be great. We had a client come to us wanting to know what they could do to qualify incoming candidates because they had issues with people coming in saying they could do the job required, then finding out quickly they couldn't. Audio is a little goofy, Dave. Okay. Um, Anybody this time? No, no we're, you're, we're breaking up pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. No, but it sounds like your question was going to be on qualifying candidates. Is that right, Dave? Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's see. Yeah, if, if you've got something out of that, Morgan, you can go and then, then uh, we'll get back to Dave or we'll let Stacy chime in if she's familiar with it or I can do it. Sure. So there, that's another thing I keep pointing out workforce West Virginia, but they actually can do testing. Um, they, they can do, sorry, Dave, we can hear you. Um, they can actually do different testing uh, for free, depending on the job type that you have. They can do drug tests, aptitude tests, um, different certifications for you. Um, I, I will, I will say I had an employer ask me about drug testing and they wanted it to be same day. It's not going to be same day, but we can get drug test results back typically in about a week if you wanted to go through that program. And thanks to Rebecca for putting that link in, in the chat, but you can go to Workforce West Virginia there. Yeah. And, and just in case everybody's not following the chat, there are a lot of great links being shared up there. So uh, keep an eye on that as well. And um, so yeah, it looks like Dave's still out. So I'll, I'll go ahead. Dave, are yeah, you there? Jamie, I'm, I'm back. I, I tried to dial in. Does that sound okay. any better now? Yeah, that sounds a whole lot better. Okay, good. Sorry about that, everybody. Technology is great when it actually wants to work. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the project Jamie was referring to, we'd had a client come to us trying to figure out how to qualify their candidates they had a maintenance position that they were hiring for and had several people say they could do it. And so they hired them, got them on the plant floor and found out they really didn't know how to do what they said they would. So when you think about that, the cost to onboard somebody to go through all the different steps to get them into your company, insurance and all that stuff, there's a cost associated with that. And after you know, letting somebody go a few times, that really adds up. So we met with them to understand you know, what did they want to learn? What, was their, what were they interested in? What were the, the key points of this job? So we took that and just put together a small standardized test that they could give an applicant. Um, we walked the plant floor with them to look at their systems, use some pictures, you know, some identify what are these things. If you had to do this to this machine, how would you go about doing it? It was nothing grandiose. It wasn't you know, a long automated test, but it was something short and simple that they could really use to weed out whether or not that person had the ability and the um, understanding of their equipment to complete the job that they were being asked to do. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. So um, is work keys testing being provided in West Virginia? That's probably another one for Morgan. Yeah, I guess what my answer is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Workforce West Virginia. <laughs> we need to have them on this call. <laughs> but yeah um dave hit it on the head with that link there uh, matt region two there with workforce west virginia has a link that talks a little bit more about that um that is right. not something that i have a lot of subject matter expertise in but i know that they can help with that well i'll help you out you usually you can just call your uh, regional workforce investment board and uh, they they can probably steer you in the right direction, but they used to offer the work keys uh, testing uh, for employers. So 
uh, if you need if you need connected to your regional board, I, the link there is for Region Two, which is in Huntington. So if you're anywhere in the Huntington area, you can just go to to, to the website there, and and uh, or you can contact me, and I can get you connected. And if that's the Matt, I think it is Matt. You would go through Mid Ohio Valley Regional Council in Parkersburg, MVRC, and I can get you their contact if you need it. Thank you. So uh, one of the other broad topics that was discussed was supply chain. And, and Lacey, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, supply chain issues in the, the agricultural world. Do you want to talk about that a little bit about how that works, how you guys might help with that? Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, one of the obvious things that came forward from COVID was the fragility of our supply chain as far as food goes and access to it. Um, so we're certainly all about trying to support, um, you know, the local food economy in West Virginia. We've got an incentive right now for um, institutions to start sourcing more locally, really to set a trend and a precedence and to create more of a market so that more agricultural producers can start to develop businesses and, and have you know, potential large scale outlets um, to at least sell to. So um, when you think about state funded institutions, you know, this could be um, anything from elementary schools, hospitals, prisons, um, anyone who buys food and serves it to people with a state dollar. So that's, that's one program that comes to mind for me, but um, I mean, it, you know, anybody who has a business in West Virginia, you know, and, and wants to source more locally, we certainly have access to uh, potential producers um, or the ability to, to help create those um, suppliers in, in your area as far as ag goes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Dave, I think we, or, or Dave Carrick, I'm sorry, I think we would be, uh, remiss if we didn't talk about aim higher at this point right sure sure there's a um the industrial extension wbu are one of 17 partners in a program that's being run by our um, sister organization catalyst connection in southwestern pennsylvania aim higher is to help create a defense supply chain community in west virginia um, there is, I believe, a website with a resource database being developed right now, and there's also a $5,000 matching mini grant available for companies who are trying to implement new technologies or help solidify or grow their business into the um, defense, the DOD supply chain. Um, if you have any questions about that, you know, please let me know. Um, I can drop my email in the chat and I can talk with you a little more direct about that based on what you want to do. But we're, uh, we're seeing a lot of interest in that and the mini grants are a great way to get some things done that are, even if it doesn't get you into the, the DOD supply chain, it can improve your operations and your day-to-day -day business. So definitely something worth uh, looking into there. Sure. Does anybody else have any supply chain stories they'd like to share or, or services that they, they offer for supply chains? I'll go. Uh, that's honestly one of my favorite part of this job is that I meet 12 counties worth of companies. So sometimes people will ask me about, hey, do you know anyone who makes cardboard boxes or I need this widget or I need cleaning supplies? Um, you know, that's really how the development office loves to help is by connecting other West Virginia businesses with each other. So if you just let um, me, for anyone on this call, you're in my region. If you let me know of a service that you're looking for, I'd be more than happy to pull a list for you of who in, in West Virginia can do that. Um, we also have a research team in our office. So even if you ask me, I just recently got asked about um, like for like lumber mills. If you need me to pull a list of every lumber mill in West Virginia, we have a team that can do that for you. So we're, we're here for that. We want to help that lowers your logistic costs and it allows you to help another West Virginia business. And likewise, if I've met with you, I'm telling other people about you as well. Um, I see Adam Sigmund on here. Adam, I'm pointing you out, but there's there's different companies that hopefully I've been able to help connect the dots with a little bit and we want to do that. So please let me know if I can help. Sure. That looks great. Anybody else have something to add about supply chains? 
manufacturers are being very quiet today. I'm on mute, but uh, I started talking. <laughs> I was on mute. I'm sure what you said was brilliant. Well, what, what I was going to say was this this is a link to our uh, supply chain expo. It's actually at one o'clock this afternoon. With, but uh, this is the one that's focusing on uh, the healthcare sector. Oh, sure. And uh -huh. so this is just an idea of the kind of is, the, the kind of services that uh, the hospitals and the healthcare folks are going to be on the call, the large employers. So they're looking for everything from commercial flooring to pipe fitting to heating and cooling, HVAC lawn care, you name it, waste management. So, I mean, it's a, it's a laundry list. And, and uh, these are the, this is a program that the uh, Advantage Valley is doing. Uh, so if any of you have interest in this and you're available at one o'clock, you can, you, can, uh, you can still register, I believe, uh, and jump on there. Thanks, and this David. is on the Advantage Valley website. If you just go there, you can okay. find it. Very cool. Um, I got a message. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Morgan. Sorry, one last thing. We have a small circle here. So I see Kay on here, Kay Young Brown with Enterprise. Hey, Kay, I just sent someone your information actually for a company that's having some carpooling issues. And uh, last week had the driver bail, and then they lost not one employee that day, they lost four or five employees that day. So I sent someone your information, and hopefully, you'll be hearing from them soon. Great. Great. I, yeah, I got a, a message here. Um, it would be nice to have a phone directory with all the government folks on the call and a brief synopsis, synopsis under each name of what things each can help with. So we'll put that together for the, for the call and we'll send that out uh, with the email at the end with the recording of this because you guys will want to watch this over and over, I'm sure. So, uh, so yeah, thanks. And that, and, and that was one of our manufacturers, Nancy Brown, uh, that they're at Bob's market. Always good to see you, Nancy. Um, so, uh, the next topic, uh, that, that seems to, to, to come up over and over is, is education. Um, one of them being what efforts are being made to promote STEM education in the region. So whenever I got that, I, I'd kind of like to flip that just a little bit and, and ask, our manufacturers and service providers, what, uh, how important do you think that the, the youth education is? I think that that's uh, one of the areas it gets kind of neglected, but we never know how much emphasis to put on there with our organization. You know, we, we have certain metrics that we have to meet and that's usually not in the forefront. So let's hear from some folks about youth outreach, STEM education, what are your thoughts? How do you think it should be handled? Man, I must really like to talk. I tried really hard not to be the first one this time. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, but I am a huge advocate and uh, cheerleader for a program through our community and technical college system. And Dave Laving is going to laugh because I, I feel like I tell everyone about it. But we have this awesome program called the Learn and Earn program through the community and tech college system. So for people on this call, that would be Bridge Valley, Mount West, or WVUP. Um, that program is trying to connect students that are seeking an associate degree with an employer in their need. So basically they can customize kind of like an internship, they can customize it for the length of time that you need. Like I just helped someone um, with agricultural who just needed uh, some help through the summer. Um, so Nancy, that might be some sort of interest with Bob's, you know, we, we've sometimes had people do it for an entire year. And the hope is that the student is getting real world experience while they're going to school. But the really big perk for the employer is that the state is going to pay half their wage for you. So if you have someone and you hire them for $12 an hour to help, then the state's going to reimburse you and you get paid back six. So really it can be for any program that is taught at a community and technical college system. Um, you just have to look at which colleges have which programs. So we can do welding and electrical. Maybe you need marketing help. Maybe you need some help in accounting in your administrative offices. But that's just such a good program to get students interested in what they're doing with a real employer. And then it can get employers some help um, at a fraction of the cost as well. 
Hey. It's called the Learn and Earn, Mary. Learn and Earn. And I'm happy to put a link in the chat for that. Thank you. And, and I see we've got uh, Rebecca McPhail with us, uh, the West Virginia Manufacturers Association. And I know she's very active in uh, what Manufacturing Day and some other opportunities. So yeah, you want to talk about some of the stuff you guys are doing? Sure, Jamie. Um, hi, Rebecca McPhail with the West Virginia Manufacturers Association. For those that I don't know on Zoom today, um, back in 2014, the WVMA worked with its membership to prioritize workforce development and the pipeline um, for qualified workers in the manufacturing industry by establishing a nonprofit uh, foundation that our members support through uh, corporate contributions, but we also have funders like Benedum and Chevron and others um, that support these efforts. And this is a school-based program. We, we decided that we needed to start really kind of um, developing the talent pool for manufacturing and that um, we needed to do that early. So we actually program in middle schools and high schools throughout West Virginia and have done so. Um, we launched the program in the fall of 2015 and have had the opportunity to work now with hundreds of students and, and several manufacturing companies um, throughout West Virginia for programs like video contests, um, explore the new manufacturing academies where we give students at the middle school age an opportunity to kind of do some things that are hands-on to demonstrate uh, what manufacturing looks like today and to educate them on the educational pathways that are available, whether that's through career and technical education at the high school level or community and technical college um, educational programs or moving on to four-year programs for engineering and, and other specialty fields that are much needed in manufacturing. So that's been a great program. Um, it continues to expand. And um, I, I think it, it's made, um, made really strong by the commitment of the manufacturers that participate and that engage with their um, local high schools and middle schools for the programming that we offer. Great, great. Uh, anybody else have anything to add about, about particularly youth uh, education in the manufacturing world? Um, I would like to say some stuff. Um, I actually have a high school teaching background and also I've worked for AEP in human resources for a number of years and AXO Nobel chemical plant and currently in the agricultural field. So I have a very wide um, experience range. And all through these years, I have seen it getting worse. It's that they don't have basic training. The students, um, we have a high dropout rate, of course, in West Virginia, that's one problem. You get a lot of applicants that are GED or dropouts, and so their education is less than somebody that is a graduate. But even the high school graduates, they can't, like for our stores, they can't even make change um, at the cash register unless the cash register tells them specifically uh, what the amount is to give back. And um, basic skills like filling out the application, the I-9 form, they don't even know their address or their social security number. Writing skills, they're so used to everything being a uh, computer or phone that they can't even fill out the forms um, if you have to handwrite them. So um, I see just basic life skills necessary, how to come to work on time, how to dress and behave at work. Um, those things are needed because you only have a small percentage that are college bound in this state. So I think you need to focus more in the school system on your entry level and manufacturing jobs rather than your college bound as much. Uh, I think they're kind of been taken care of in the past years. And math skills and all of those businesses that I mentioned that I've worked in there are math skills that are needed, even in the most basic entry level jobs. And I'm not talking algebra, trig, calculus. I'm talking just basic, you know, two plus two type math. I see that that's even lacking. And some very basic science, like in our ag industry, we need like pH knowledge. 
um, acid base, you know, that type of stuff. Um, safety data sheets, make people aware of that because almost any business you're going to work in, you're going to be exposed to safety data sheets and how to read those and that kind of thing. So that's kind of uh, my two cents on the thing. I don't want to go on and on and bore everybody, but that's what I've seen that the basics aren't really being covered very well. Okay, great. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Jamie, um, before we move on, the only thing I'll, um, I'll add is, is in the agriculture world, we like to refer to STEM as STEAM. <laughs> sure. And we throw the extra A in there just to um, re reiterate the importance of ag. And um, I'll just make a nod to our FFA programs across the state. Um, you know, right now the interest is, is over the last few years has been at an all time high. And my good friend, Bill Woodrum, I'm sure could speak to, uh, <laughs> speak to this for hours. He's, he's been a huge advocate for the program, I know. But, you know, not all, not all of these students go on to be the future farmers of America, but they do go on to be uh, really great citizens, you know, have a broad skill set to share with the workforce. And so, um, you know, I think looking at uh, those programs and, and those students as potential candidates for our workforce um, is, it's, it's a great area to support. Okay. Um, the, uh, so, Jamie, I would add too that uh, uh, the Career and Technical Education Program has uh, instituted a, uh, a simulated workplace program in their career and technical schools. So it, it's been a very popular program. Uh, the students uh, actually learn a lot of work skills. Uh, getting back to some of the stuff that Nancy was talking about. Uh, they learn, they learn, you know, to be punctual, to be on time. They punch a time clock. They're drug tested. Uh, they they learn about uh, material safety data sheets and things like that in their in their program. So, a lot of the technical uh, schools have adopted that program, and uh, it, it's something to if you if you're not aware of it, you may want to you may want to talk to your local county board, uh, your vocational, I call them vocational directors, but I guess they're career and technical education directors nowadays, um, and learn a little bit more about what's going on in your in your county with that. And Morgan posted a link that's, so you can check it out. It's a pretty interesting program. I think it's very innovative and uh, I think it helps get students uh, better prepared to transition from school into the workplace. Great, great. Um, so I saw that, uh, I don't see anybody from the apprenticeship program at the state on here. That's, oh, well, 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 we'll skip over that for now then. Um, but training needs is another thing that uh, always comes up. And, and I know Dave, you touched a little bit on, Dave Carrick, on uh, some of the, the training that we offer. But if you wanted to talk a little bit more in detail about that, that would be awesome. Sure. Yeah, you know, some of the uh, kind of go back to that very first question we talked about with workforce and you know growing and keeping the workforce you have. A lot of the things that we do, like when I spoke about leadership earlier, you know, if you look at the stats, you'll see most people leave a job because of their boss, not necessarily because of the work they do. So you know, we do some training with the leadership stuff to help make you understand how to be a better employee, understanding the personality types of your employees and what really motivates them. Um, everything from assessments to just on the job coaching and training to help make better managers because that's 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 what makes you want to stay or leave a job most of the time. Uh, the other part of that is like Jamie said training is training people to do a job. Um, it, it's no secret where uh, West Virginia is really unique with a lot of small and super small manufacturers and that doesn't lend to large training programs that you see in bigger companies. So when you bring somebody into a new job and you just kind of do some on the job training or push them in the deep end and hope they can float, that doesn't make somebody want to stick around at that job. It makes them feel undervalued. So we can work with clients to develop work instructions and job instructions that are very simple and to the point that lets somebody kind of get an idea of what they, what's expected of them in that job. And those can be used for onboarding. They can be used for training on the floor. Um, and even parts of that include safety and quality so that they can understand the importance of what they're doing and why they have to do it a particular way. Um, how many times do you learn how to do something and it's just the way you're taught to do it. If you understand why it's done that way, you take more pride in what you're doing. 
So you're kind of instilling with the combination of that leadership and those work instructions, you're instilling a sense of pride in developing a small program that will help grow the people that are there and show them that they want to be there. Um, some other things we can do, it gets a little bit of a stretch from training, but relates to all of this. Um, most of all, you know, looking at some of these smaller companies, strategic planning is kind of a daunting task. You know, you're so caught up in the day-to-day -day operation that sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. So if we look a little further into the future about our business, what we're doing and what those needs are, we can create job pathways in these companies for people so that they understand that the job they're doing today may only pay $15 an hour. But if they do the right thing, they learn the right skills, they could get up to $20, $25 an hour, become a leader, have a, have a substantial role. And I, I hate to say climb the ladder, it's kind of cliche, but just give them a job path that they can see that there's a future there for them beyond just getting a paycheck. So now you, you, you take that combination of instruction, um, teaching leaders how to work with people on the floor and understand them and give them a pathway that they can use to solidify their position in that company as they grow and learn more. I think that helps with that retention and all that's focused around training and development. No, that's, that's great. So uh, anything to add? I'd, I'd love to hear from some of our manufacturers about some of the training challenges they've had. Hey, Jamie. Hey, James. Hey, um, one of the things that we've done since I've been here, since before I got here to Polymer Alliance here in Washington, West Virginia, I've worked with some larger companies and one of the things is, is the training program and realizing you're not just putting all these tools in front of people. You have to actually take time with them. And sometimes, you know, you, you have to realize that people learn differently. So I've had to do one-on-ones with our guys and figure out how can I reach them? So it's great having all the tools, the technology and everything, but sometimes we have to take time to actually get to know the person and figure out what's gonna help them learn and how they're gonna learn it. And that has helped us um, with our, even during this time where we're having a little struggles trying to keep people because of the pandemic and the you know unemployment benefits and everything. Um, five years ago, we were, we were at about 50% re you know, retention rate. Now we're about 75% just by getting to know the guys and putting the tools and figuring out how they learned and everything. So this has been great. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. That's great. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're, we're getting close Dave. on time here. I, I had a, uh, if anybody had anything to add, Dave, did you have something there? Dave Kirk? No, I was the James. That's so important. I love to hear that because it's, that, that's a key part of, you know, growing and keeping your team is just understanding how they learn. Some people just need to be given a sheet of paper and off the race as they go. Some really need that one-on-one -on -one interaction until they get comfortable with it. So, sure. so my hat's off to you for taking the time to invest in those. I'm glad you're seeing the reward from that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So I uh, wanted to talk about uh, the SPDC and then managing the CARES Act money. Um, didn't know if that, is that a Morgan thing there? Or? Yes. And actually, if you don't mind, I think I might share my screen real quick. Sure. Okay. Can it may be small. Can you see this? Yes. Let's do okay. Okay. So um, the I told you guys that SBDC is our sister agency. They have small business development coaches. Um, Bill Woodrum on the call just joined our team with SBDC. One of the things that they can help with currently is they have um, some CARES Act money that they are using in order to give technical assistance to small businesses. And before you write yourself off, small businesses um, are typically everyone that's on this call. So there is a variety of ways that they can help um, and this money is only through September. So if there's something on this list that you think you might want some help with, please let me know and I'll get you connected with your local business coach to assist with this. But as I just go through this list real quickly, um, there's ways that they can help. So let's say with marketing, I've, I've got them connected with a few um, people who don't have websites, for example, website development. Um, they're helping with government contracting, accounting help, if you still are trying to figure out the PPP process. 
um, HR help, you know, business operations, succession planning. This list is extensive and um, very thorough. So if there is something that you all need technical assistance on that you see on this list and you've been impacted by COVID, please let me know. And what, what they'll do is they actually have um, what they're calling subject matter experts that are scattered throughout West Virginia. They will connect you with them and then they are going to cover um, a portion or most of the cost for that work. So for example, if you need help developing a website, they will connect you with someone like a marketing firm that is one of their subject matter experts. And then that firm will do the work for you, um, but through the CARES Act, they're able to help pay for some of that. So Bill, I don't know if you wanna add anything to that uh, or if anyone has any questions, but I didn't wanna end today's call without letting you guys know about this program because we've never been able to do this before. Yeah, the, the one bit of good news is uh, that program just got extended to September of 2022. So oh, there's, great. A, there's a whole nother year. Um, you do have to be an SBDC client to access it, but you don't have to be an existing SBDC client. So be upfront about saying, heard you had these SME dollars. How can that help my business? And go, I just dropped the link to the SBDC in there. So um, go there and look for your local contact or just shoot a, a uh, email and one of the coaches should get back to you. Yeah. And, and Bill, to become a client is really a painless process too, right? It's not, it's Super. just, it's, but yeah, yeah it, it's very easy. Simple paperwork typically. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting really close to, to noon. I want to be respectful of everybody's time and uh, just want to thank everybody for, for joining us today. We've got, we've got five more regional roundtables coming up. So if you aren't region specific, come on out and join us for those as well. Uh, but again, thank you from the uh, WVU Industrial Extension for, for, for joining us. And we will uh, see you all real soon. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.